What's happening everybody? Welcome back. Plant Based Eats here. It was a scorcher today where I'm located here in the Bay Area, California. Right here it got up to about 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Yesterday we were at 106. But thankfully for my garden, I've got a solution for a meal that really comes in handy on days like this especially. I like to just head out on these hot days with my blender carafe and gather up some of the different fruits and greens and whip up a smoothie. So if you never had a smoothie, it's a great way to get all your nutrients in for the day, all the vitamins and minerals. And if you balance it out just right, it's gonna taste really good as well. This hot weather has really brought out the goji berries. I've been harvesting off these plants here for quite some time, but they really do like the heat. And there are quite a few berries to pick today, so I'm gonna go ahead and gather a quick harvest. See how beautiful these goji berries are? That dark red color equates to nutrition in my book. Next I'm going to be harvesting some aronia berries. These are the aronia melanocarpa viking. So here I harvested a quick handful and these berries, if you never heard of them, are extremely high in antioxidants, three times that of blueberries. I've got some Honeycrisp apples, and that just fell off the tree there. I'm only gonna need one for today's recipe. There's still a few left on the tree. This is a young tree. I thinned the majority of the fruits off of it and left a few so that I could taste test and put them in smoothies like I'm doing today. Over here I have some grapevines growing, and I already pulled my harvest earlier in the season, but a few bunches have re-emerged now. This is a Thompson seedless grape known as Flame, which is why you see that red burgundy color. Thompson seedless grapes are normally green, but both this Flame and the standard variety both put off uh, these pretty nice clusters of smaller grapes that are seedless, so I'm gonna grab some of these to put in my smoothie today. I think I'll save some of these for a snack later on as well. Over here, I've got the Peter's honey fig tree, and there's quite a few ripe figs on here. These figs actually remain a yellowish green when they're fully ripe. So with these figs, you know they're ripe when the neck is bent over where it attaches to the branch. And also just by squeezing them, they should be nice and soft. Look at that one's just oozing out goodness. Throw those into the mix. Check out this pomegranate tree. It seems to really be enjoying the heat. This is a younger tree here. And this will be the first year that I reap a harvest. This is the wonderful variety. That's the name, wonderful. So this is looking pretty good right here. I'm gonna add a little bit of greens into this. Here we've got one of my favorite greens known as longevity spinach. And I like to harvest both the tips of the plant and some of the larger leaves. So I was able to very quickly harvest a handful. That'll go into the blender. And this amazing green over here is a unique hybrid of Lacinato kale, also known as dino kale, and tree collard. And there's definitely some other plant DNA in its parentage from the Brassica oleracea family. I've got a few different examples of this plant growing back here, but these leaves are absolutely abundant. And I'm just gonna harvest two today to throw into the smoothie. Now I like to just strip the foliage off of the stem just by running my hand down this plant. 
could definitely add this on into the blender as well if you're looking for even more fiber but we've already got plenty of fiber in this drink all right so let's bring this inside now and i'll show you what i do from here all right so the first thing i'm going to do is give this produce a quick rinse now there are some known health benefits to not rinsing off your produce however i do see the dust and different debris and such that are on some of the plant matter so i choose to rinse mine off uh, but use your own discretion with that And yes, I could just take a bit of water, add it to this, blend it up, and have myself an instant, delicious, nutritious drink with all fresh, homegrown produce. But I like to take my smoothies to the next level. Here's a couple ways that I do that. So you can see in my freezer here, I've got these mason jars of frozen sliced bananas. I'm always stocked up with frozen bananas. What I do is, I purchase these bunches of organic bananas, and usually when you buy them, they're still green. So I allow them to ripen up. You can see there's some spots starting to form on the bananas here. I'm actually going to give this another day or two. I want to see even more spotting, at which point I'll peel the bananas, slice them up, put them into a jar like this with a lid, and pop them in the freezer, and they're good to go whenever I need them. And these will easily stay good for a couple months in the freezer, no problem. And I devised a really easy way to get these frozen banana slices out of the jar. So what I do is I just add my room temperature water, And this not only quickly defrosts those bananas to the point where you can easily get them out with a butter knife, but it also chills the water from my smoothie. So I'll just dump that into the blender. And check out how easy it is now to get these bananas out of the jar. They just fall out. And usually I use about half a jar of these bananas for a smoothie, which equates to about two bananas as it takes about four fully grown bananas to fill up one of these jars. I just slap the lid back on and pop it back into the freezer and that'll be the next serving of bananas that I use. So you can see here that brought the liquid level up to about halfway up the carafe. I actually like to fill up my blender just above the top of my ingredients with liquid. So whether I mix in with the water almond milk, coconut milk, or flax milk, or like what I'm just going to do today, add more water, I just want to bring it up just over the top of the ingredients. Just like that. So this is where I take my smoothies to the next level. I'm a big fan of supplementation using some of the superfoods that are available to us on the market these days. Here's just a few that I'm going to add into my smoothie today. I've got a tablespoon of flax seed. Here I've got a tablespoon of chia seed. Here we've got a teaspoon of bee pollen. Over here I've got a teaspoon of ashwagandha powder. Here I've got a teaspoon of moringa powder. And here I've got a teaspoon of spirulina powder. Now, rather than taking a bunch of time going into why I'm adding all of these into my smoothie, what I'm going to do is include links to Amazon where you could purchase these products. And if you click those links, that'll take you to the product details page and it'll list all the different benefits to these supplements here. So I'd encourage you to check it out if you're interested. And of course, if you make a purchase through any of those links, you're helping out the channel. So I really do appreciate that. So I like to add these dry ingredients to the top towards the center of the machine here as a lot of these ingredients can stick to the side of the blender and I want to try to avoid that. All that's left to do now is slap the lid on and give it a blend. Also, if you add ingredients like the chia seed into your smoothie, it's going to continue to thicken up the drink the longer it sits. So keep that in mind when making your smoothie, especially if you're going to store some in the fridge. You may want to make it a little thinner, adding a bit more liquid up front. Now, I'm a big guy, so oftentimes I will actually consume this entire blender's worth of smoothie over the course of maybe 45 minutes or so, and that'll be one big complete meal for me. Another option is to drink whatever you want and then put the rest into a jar with a lid, put it in the fridge, that'll stay good for a day, no problem. And it will separate a bit after sitting that long in the fridge, but you just give it a quick shake and then enjoy. And don't let the looks fool you. These green smoothies can be absolutely delicious once you get the idea of how to put your ingredients together. Cheers, everybody.
And don't forget to chew your smoothie while you're drinking it back. That's going to stimulate your salivary glands, which is going to help to aid in digestion.